I'll say, hey, every day I'll choose. Jesus, I will follow you. Let everything I do honor you every day. I'll trust and obey every word you say. Cause I know, I know that you love me. I'm following your way every single day. I want to be who you want me to be. You are the life, the truth, the way. So I'll say, hey, every day. Jesus, I will follow you for everything I do. Honor you every day, every day I'll choose. Jesus, I will follow you for everything I do. Honor you every day.
everyone, my name is Brittany and we're so excited you're joining us today. Today we're going to be talking about the story of the Israelites in the wilderness. After the Israelites were delivered from Egypt, they were on their way to the land God had promised them. And as they were traveling there, they got hungry and thirsty, but they were in the desert. So Moses prayed and asked for God to provide for them, and that's exactly what God did. The Israelites could trust that God would provide for them, and we can trust God to do the very same for us. And that's why today we're saying, every day I can trust Jesus. So we're going to start things off together by singing a song. So go ahead, stand up, and sing this out with us as loud as you can. Now I'm living, I'm living out loud Jesus, let my life be 
future's bright Cause you want good things for me Let my life be your story My future's bright Cause you want good things for me So bring on tomorrow, bring on today I ain't afraid of what comes my way Let my story every page bring glory to Jesus' name So much for singing along with us and now we're gonna take some time to watch a Bible story together so like I said earlier today's story is about the Israelites in the wilderness so let's check it out the faithful Hall of Fame Moses This is Moses, hey. who was an Israelite born in Egypt in a time when Israelite boys were not supposed to live. Wait, huh? Moses, however, grew up in the palace of the Pharaoh, the very man who was enslaving the Israelite people. When Moses grew up, he made a big mistake uh -oh. and fled Egypt uh -oh. to live with the Midianites. Uh. But God called Moses back to Egypt. Ah to deliver his people with the help of his brother Aaron. Ooh. After God showed his miraculous power in Egypt, he led the Israelites through the Red Sea and towards the Promised Land. They followed God who showed himself as a cloud by day and fire by night. As God led them through the wilderness, the Israelites became thirsty and hungry. Uh. They complained to Moses and Aaron uh. and said, if only we had died in Egypt. Uh. God said to Moses that he would provide for his people. Hey. Each morning they awoke and found manna for the day. Uh. What's that? And each night God gave them meat. The people were still thirsty, and they were mad at Moses, saying, Did you bring us out here to die of thirst? Yeah. So Moses cried out to God, and God told Moses to strike a rock, and water came flowing out of it for the people to drink. And so the Lord provided for his people's needs. After traveling in the desert for three months, they came to Mount Sinai and God called Moses from the top of the mountain. God spoke to Moses there of the future of his people and reminded him of the miracles of the past. After three days, there was thunder and lightning as a thick cloud covered the mountain. The people heard a loud trumpet blast. and Moses led people to the foot of the mountain to meet with God. God told them how his people were to live and how they were to honor him and respect each other. 
the Israelites had seen for themselves that God had spoken to Moses from heaven. These rules that God told them are called the Ten Commandments. And the Israelites feared God, for his mighty power had brought them out of slavery and provided for them in the desert. The Faithful Hall of Fame, Moses. This is Moses, hey. who was an Israelite born in Egypt in a time when Israelite boys were not supposed to live. Wait, huh? Moses, however, grew up in the palace of the Pharaoh the very man who was enslaving the Israelite people. When Moses grew up, he made a big mistake uh -oh. and fled Egypt uh -oh. to live with the Midianites. Uh. But God called Moses back to Egypt uh. to deliver his people with the help of his brother Aaron. Ooh. After God showed his miraculous power in Egypt, he led the Israelites through the Red Sea and towards the Promised Land. They followed God who showed himself as a cloud by day and fire by night. As God led them through the wilderness, the Israelites became thirsty and hungry. Uh. They complained to Moses and Aaron uh. and said, if only we had died in Egypt. Uh. 
God said to Moses that he would provide for his people. Hey! Each morning they awoke and found manna for the day. What's that? And each night God gave them meat. <laughs> the people were still thirsty and they were mad at Moses saying, did you bring us out here to die of thirst? Yeah. So Moses cried out to God, and God told Moses to strike a rock, and water came flowing out of it for the people to drink. And so the Lord provided for his people's needs. After traveling in the desert for three months, they came to Mount Sinai, and God called Moses from the top of the mountain. God spoke to Moses there of the future of his people and reminded him of the miracles of the past. After three days, there was thunder and lightning as a thick cloud covered the mountain. The people heard a loud trumpet blast. And Moses led people to the foot of the mountain to meet with God. God told them how his people were to live and how they were to honor him and respect each other. The Israelites had seen for themselves that God had spoken to Moses from heaven. These rules that God told them are called the Ten Commandments. And the Israelites feared God, for his mighty power had brought them out of slavery and provided for them in the desert. In our story today, the Israelites were wandering in the wilderness. But the whole time that they were in the wilderness, God provided for all of their needs. And God wants to do the same thing for us. Our friend, Pastor Andrew, is going to be talking to us a little bit more about that right now. So let's take a look. How many of you have ever been hungry after school? We all have. It's been a long day of school, lunch was hours ago, and now it's time to eat. So what do we do? We ask our mom or dad, grandma or older sibling when dinner is, and we ask them for dinner. Now, how ridiculous would it be if when they served up your mac and cheese, we thought to ourselves, hmm, I don't trust that mom and dad are gonna make me dinner tomorrow. I better keep some of this in my pocket, just in case. No way, that'd be ridiculous. But guess what? That's what the Israelites did in our story. God told the Israelites that he would give them what they needed for each day. And that's what God did. God sent bread from heaven each morning. Isn't that crazy? Where on earth did that come from? Ugh. Where did... Anyway, the point is every single morning, God sent bread for the Israelites and God sent quail from heaven in the evening. Huh, I would've thought I was gonna get hit in the head again, but I guess I'm okay. This is a chicken. Every day, God gave them enough for that day, but the Israelites didn't trust that God would continue to give them what they needed for each day. They kept some food and they stored it up for later, but that food spoiled. They should have trusted God for their daily bread. God gave them bread for Monday, for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Every single day, God gave them bread. Jesus taught this exact same thing. When Jesus was teaching his followers how to pray, he prayed saying, give us this day our daily bread. God gave the Israelites their daily bread. And they were in the wilderness for 40 years. And over the course of that time, there were things that they needed. They needed water, manna, and quail, and they could not get these things on their own. They had to trust that God would give those things to them every single day. So what does this mean for us? Well, you might be in a wilderness. That wilderness probably isn't a desert, but it might be a tough class at school. It might be that you're afraid. It might be sickness or that you feel lonely, or maybe there's confusion at home. So here's the thing. In the middle of your wilderness, there are things that you need too. You might need peace or healing, to know that God is with you or many other things. You can trust that God will give you those things when you need them. 
Whether you're in the wilderness for 40 years, 40 days, or just 40 minutes, you can trust God every day. Here's the last thing I want you to see. God gave us Jesus. God gave us his only son. He gave us Jesus as a sacrifice to pay the price for our sin. If God gave us Jesus, would he not also give us everything else that we need? Our God is good. He loves you and he cares about your needs. You can trust in him every single day to provide for what you need. Pastor Andrew talked about how God was able to provide for the Israelites and meet their needs every day in the wilderness. Are you in a wilderness of your own right now? And if so, what is it? Is it a tough class at school? Feeling afraid? Sickness? Feeling lonely? Or is there confusion at home? Whatever it is, I would encourage you to talk to your parents or your small group leader about what that wilderness might be. No matter how big or small it may seem, you can trust that God wants to give you what you need each and every day. So that's it for this week. And remember, every day we can trust Jesus. So thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.